Welcome everyone to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. On this week's show, we travel to Newfoundland's Great Northern Peninsula to sample some of the province's best Atlantic salmon fishing. The natural beauty of the area is simply breathtaking, and the fishing is outstanding. We'll discuss techniques, equipment, flies, and strategies for success. It's going to be another great one, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Yeah. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop. Wiggle. On the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. This week we travel to Mayflower Lodge located close to the town of Roddington on Newfoundland's Great Northern Peninsula. Our host and guide for this week is Trevor Pilgrim knowledgeable and very easygoing person and just a great guy to wet a line with. We are here in prime season with fresh runs of Atlantic salmon entering the river on a daily basis. These relatively remote waters provide scenic beauty, great fishing and a calming solitude. Best of all, this salmon fishing is both accessible and affordable. Yes, yes, all right, look at that guy go, look at him go. So that was really excellent. What happened was I actually saw that fish porpoise and I made, oh, look at that go. And I cast out above him and measured the length of the, like, the distance I needed to put it and he took it in the first swing. So there's obviously some fresh fish moving up here because we keep seeing them down here, up here. And uh, this is fantastic. First cast to him. All right. That's a good eye. You had a good eye on him there. That's where a large arbor reel is really handy because you never know how these guys are. Oh, look at he's playing possum on me right now. I know he's, it's not a real big fish, but still, it's a nice salmon. And I'm using an eight weight rod. I've got a 3X uh, tippet, but a nine foot leader. And I tell you, this is so much sport on a fly rod. And, and just, for the camera, this is fish number five I've hooked. Only this one, I'm hopefully gonna land, eh, Trevor? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh, he's, oh, there's one more jump. He's still jumping. That's about eight like or nine the, jumps. Oh, at least, it? at least. Okay, <laughs> I got his head up, though. Bring him on the line here a little more. You ready, Trev? Yeah, yeah. Coming in. All right. All right, he's okay. yours. Okay. Good job. Now, let's take a look. Uh, super big fish, and the worst part is I hooked a much bigger fish, but I lost them. Before the camera, I could barely get rolling here. And this guy's gonna go quick, though. He's got so much energy. Yeah, this water's probably 50 to 52 degrees. Woo. All right, listen, thanks, my what man. You that was That's great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yep. And let me show you the fly that was working. What is this fly? Nice. Good. That's a black bear green butt. And you can see it's a little mangled now. Yes, it's, it it's had some fun. No, that's oh, actually yeah. fish number two. It's hooked in the last five minutes. Two or three? Three. Well, three, actually yeah. three with this one. And then we had the bomber up there getting pulled under, so. Yeah. Let's go get another one. Atlantic salmon are amongst the most beautiful fish, streamlined, silver, and graceful. They're very powerful, too, among the greatest fighters in the freshwater fishing world. And perhaps most important of all, Atlantic salmon are a symbol of clean, unspoiled waters that run wild to the sea which is why Newfoundland is blessed with so many rivers with strong runs of salmon, especially in the Northern Peninsula. There are two types of rise forms that you will often see when salmon fishing. The first rise form indicates a fish that is moving through the run and is unlikely to be taken. This is when the fish jumps clearly out of the water and lands with a large splash. 
These are usually fish on the move and are hard to target successfully. The second rise form is subtle. You will only see a bulge on the surface or possibly a fin exposed. This usually indicates a fish that is holding but getting ready to move. This is the rise form that will likely produce a fish for you. Oh, I got him. There he goes. Hey! Second cast. Second cast. Yeah. There he goes. All right. Look at that. Oh! Oh, now he's coming towards me. Ah! <laughs> Look at him. Oh! Oh! Look at that. <laughs> it's a decent fish. Decent fish. Oh, let him go. Look at him go. Oh! And I got to tell you, this is why I want a large arbor reel. This is a nine foot, eight weight rod, and it's just perfect for these type of fish. That's probably what, five, six pounder, I'd say, eh? Yes. Oh, sweet. Now you see, I'm bowing to the fish. I didn't let him put too much tension on that line, but I kept pressure and I never had introduced any slack. And that's real important. Okay, now he's trying to go up river, so I'll give him some reverse here, gentle. And now he's coming down. He's way too green. Oh, this is so much fun. All right, and he took it right in the corner of the mouth there. There. All right, number two. Sweet, you yours. go ahead and do the release there. All right. Hold him there a minute. All right, that's good. That's fish number two. Fish two, Colin. All there right. Go, man. Atlantic salmon are no different than any other migratory fish as to where they'll hold in a river system. Places to look for holding salmon include current seams which are prime real estate. A current seam is where two currents of differing speeds meet. Another good holding location is water deflecting around rocks, which will create these current seams, offering ideal holding places for fish. The rock can be submerged and still offer this protection. Remember to cast to the front of rocks and boulders, as the cushion of water created often holds resting fish. The technique of swinging flies is pretty much a do-nothing method. You simply cast across and downstream slightly and allow the line to bow in the current and swing across. Repeat this twice and then strip only six inches of line out and cast again. Do this until you reach the limit of your casting ability. By doing this technique, you'll effectively cover the entire run. I'll come down and I'll give Trevor a hand with his fish. This is great. Oh, nice jumps. And right down, not here in the they, faster they water, out, right in the back end. That's what I say, they were out in the steady a little further. Wow, well, that's a yeah. nice one. Here, I'll wet my hand. Beautiful, look at the jumps. You had the rod tip high, yep. and you were pulling on the line to make sure you had that wake, and he came charging yeah. after it, right? Make him, make him aggressive, right? Okay. okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna back it up. Right here. So what's this, about a four to five pound fish? Yes. And this is an average fish for this river, right? This is an average gross, yeah. We're using an eight weight rod here, about a nine foot liter, and I've got about an eight pound test tippet on it. Man, that water's cold. <laughs> it is cold. I bet you that's just a bit over 50 degrees. Look at that. There yeah. you go. There, look at that. Good. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. beautiful. Bright chrome. Beautiful fish. You want to pull that fly yeah. out? Yes, yeah, sure. This All takes right. right out. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? It Good job, beautiful. Trevor. Good job. All right, so let's get him in there. Get him resuscitated. Oh, he's already kicking. He's ready to go. There he goes. All right. Good job. Let's get another one. The equipment needed for Atlantic salmon when coming to Mayflower Lodge are nine foot stiff action rods in the sizes number seven and number eight, along with the large arbor reels that have smooth drags. Regulations dictate that only floating lines may be used. When fishing a wet fly, the addition of a hitch to the head of the fly 
is commonly used for Atlantic salmon. A fly that is tied with a hitch will plane on the water's surface, causing a trailing V behind the fly. As the fly glides across the surface, it is turned sideways depending on which side you apply the hitch, so as to expose more of the fly to the waiting salmon. After the fly is attached to your tippet, simply make an extra loop in your tippet, turn it around, and slide it over the head of the fly and pull tight. Repeat this a second time to ensure the knot holds. There are many opinions on what side of the fly's head the hitch should be tied, but generally it's agreed if the water is flowing right to left, tie it on the right side, and if it's going left to right, tie it on the left side. So Trevor's got me out here on this rock and we're fishing what's basically the, the tail end of a run here, right? Yeah, right. And uh, I just threw a bomber out. It was just starting to take the uh, run apart and the salmon came up and basically bumped it with its nose, right? Didn't take it. So you're automatically, you said, rest it, right? Rest it, give him a break. He thinks now that that gives him the idea that he did something really good, that he pushed that fly off the water is not going to aggravate them anymore. But when you put that fly back now, like if you went right back at it, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have, he, w he would probably ignore it. But if you give him that minute or two to uh, think that he did really well, then you put that fly back. Usually it'll take it either first or second cast. Okay. More time now? I'd say it'd be good. Okay. We'll try again. There he is. Got him. All right. Whew. Made to work for that one, didn't you we? You did, you did. There he is, right below us here. Hey! Oh! Now, the question is, is this the same fish we saw before? I think so. He came from the exact same spot. Whoa, nice fish. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'd say a 9.9. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you gotta give to the fish so you don't break these tippets. Okay, there he is. Here, get his head up. I'll bring him to you in this current. I'll bring him on the side here. Slow water. There Cheers. you go. Beautiful. Look at that. Nice fish. That's probably what, about five pounds, you say? Yeah, he's about five. There he goes. Oh, hey. there he goes. Beautiful. Took a while, but he, I think he's going to be great. Well, that was worth the work. I mean, it was, yes. a, it was a lot of cash. Thanks. <laughs> it's your first Cloud River salmon. Yes, it is. It is. And uh, I got to tell you, it was pretty exciting, especially taking it on a bomber like this. Mayflower's Lakefront Lodge was designed and built in 1991 for a maximum of eight guests. Each guest has a semi-private room with a comfortable bed. Every room has a bathroom with shower and electricity. The main sections of the lodge have a large and comfortable sitting and dining area with a fireplace in both locations. Meals at Mayflower are home cooked and hearty. You'll never leave the table hungry. Mayflower Outfitters offers great accommodations, great food, and great service. I strongly recommend them for both salmon fishing and hunting trips. Mayflower Lodge has a very unique package. We, have, we put together Atlantic salmon fishing and black bear hunting. Atlantic salmon fishing is best in the morning and the fish are most active in the morning. The black bear hunting is most active in the evening. So this package goes together very well. Atlantic salmon, salmon fish in the morning put you in the bear stand in the evening. And our success is amazing. We're, we're nearly 100% success on the black bear, spring black bear hunt. Yep, got him. Yep. All right. And you know what I did? We'd seen that fish. I moved position to put a different angle on him. Yeah. And I had to shorten, I had to shorten up. Because I think what it was, I, was, I went, I was too long, I was too far away from him. That's a good yeah. job, Colin. 
Thanks. Sometimes you just got to do little calculations and move around to get the right angle with the fly. Don't know how big he is. <laughs> this is so much fun. Oh, look, he's using that current. He hasn't jumped yet. No, not yet. Look at the reel. Making the reel sing. That's why it's important to have 3X tippet for these fish. Because they're strong. There's a lot of rocks here. You need some good abrasion resistance. And I got to tell you, spend the money to get good quality tippet. You're going to need it, and you're going to use it. Put some pressure to him now. Get him in. Head is up. Head is up. There you go. Magnificent. A breath of air. And he took it right in the top here as it was waking by. Just saw a swirl and felt the take. That uh, black bear green butt is doing uh, magnificent today. I think with this rain, it's uh, kind of turned them off surface fishing. Oh, there you go. There he goes. And they're not taking the bombers. This is, I, oh man, I'm having so <laughs> much fun. This is incredible. It's uh, just a typical day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to continue this typical day. <laughs> the rain continued to come down hard, so we decided to head back to the lodge for some much needed rest and to plan the next day's strategy. The setup I'm using on this trip is a floating line going to a tapered leader to a 3x tippet. It is important to note no weight of any kind may be used in or on the system. Hey. All right. Now this fish was right at the bottom of the V, as they call it. And I was just about finished working this area, and I was just going to make maybe two or three more casts, a couple steps down, and this guy came up and slammed it. Let me get him on the reel. Oh, there he goes. Oh, wow. Nice fish. Okay. Ooh. So. Fish did a run down river on me here. It's just stopped raining. And I've got him back up. It's real important to keep the tension. And this is what can happen. He went all the way down there. It was almost into my backing. And then just as quickly, he came back up river. And I got to say, this is where a large arbor reel, like the one I'm using right now, is pretty critical. You want to be able to get this fish or keep this fish tight all the time and be ready to bow to the fish as well. Oh. <laughs> this is so much fun. I'm loving this. What a great few days I've had this here. This one's okay, got Trevor. sea lice. All right. This one's got sea lice. You hooked them in the bottom lip. Good job, Trevor. Beautiful fish. What a bullet. So strong. OK, let's let him go. You were persistent with, uh, with getting this one. There you go. There he goes. Good job. All right. Good job, buddy. Well, you know, that was a good application of some of the things you were telling me about, Trevor. You know, I've got to work thoroughly the whole run. So I was very methodical. And I was casting all the way through. I was almost at the, the bottom of the V here. And I was changing my angle to change the speed of the fly. And I had just stepped two steps to the left. So coming in towards shore, and it, I, think it, I think it was a trigger, because I'd already fished that water, hadn't seen anything. Right. But the fly was a little bit faster waking on the surface, and that's probably what did it. He came up and took it. A good selection of flies to bring with you when visiting Mayflower Lodge would be Green Highlanders, Blue Charms, Thunder and Lightning, and of course, Silver Blues. Also, don't forget to bring a supply of dry flies that will include the Orange Bomber and Green Machines. All will work well. Got him! Yeah. All right! All right!
Hey, it's good fish too, big fish. And it's amazing, well, all I had to do is I was just tightening up on the, oh, look at that. Uh, <laughs> what I was doing was uh, doing the technique that Trevor had showed me, which works really well. I used my hand on the line, kept the rod tip up, uh, and uh, was pulling on the line very lightly just to make sure that skating and, and, and making the sure the speed was good. This is a nice bright fish. This is our second fish this morning. Oh, that's a nice fish. It is a nice fish. It's beautiful. And uh, kind of slowed down. We played with some different flies and some different hooks, and I tried different angles, but finally found the right one to work. And he came right up and took that fly off the surface. This is just like dry fly fishing, only it's, it's a riffling hitch, right? Yes. You're making a wet fly into a dry fly in many ways. You get to see the surface take. It's pretty exciting. An eight weight rod and really exciting salmon fishing. Oh, look at him, there he goes. Oh, oh, get away from that rock, get away from that rock. Put some pressure on him here. There we go, back out in the river. Trevor, I think this guy's ready to come in. And if you don't mind, once you get him tail, I'll let you get a photo. Releasing all these fish very quickly. You the water, the... well, the water's so cold, it's, you know, it's a good, Situation. Yeah. Look at that fly right in the corner of the right mouth. Right in the corner, yeah. Good job. Thank Good you. Good job. All right, let's get that fly out. It's right there in the corner of the mouth. Just pops right out. Marvelous. Get him in the water. There he goes. And he's, he's already really kicking. Really strong fish. Yeah, really strong fish. Very nice. It's a nice five, six pounder. Ooh. Oh, oh gave a little splash. <laughs> Thanks. That was great, Trevor. Good stuff. Good. Good catch. I've had a great time here at Mayflower Lodge. Uh, if you want to go salmon fishing, this is the place to go. I mean, there's so many fish. He's got quite a few rivers in the area, and it's very affordable and accessible. I mean, that's one of the key things. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.